In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. From him alone do we seek help. All praise and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, blessings and peace be upon our master Muhammad, and upon his family, and all of his companions. O oh brother, you have asked me for advice, so listen with me, to some truths contained in eight short allegories. As you are a soldier, they have been put into the form of military stories. I really do see my own lower self, nafs, as being more in need of good advice than that of anyone else. And accordingly, I once recounted to my own lower self, in some detail, eight words, that I had garnered from eight verses of the Quran. I am now going to recount a concise version of this in layman's terms. Whoever wishes may listen along with my lower self. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, is the beginning of all goodness. Thus, at the beginning, we too begin to explain it. O oh, my own lower self! Know that this blessed utterance is the symbol of Islam. It is also the invocation of every single thing in existence, expressed through the languages of the states of those things. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, has an immense power that is never exhausted, and a grace that will never pass away. If you wish to understand this, then direct your attention to this short allegory. Listen, any man traveling through the deserts of the Arab Bedouin must affiliate himself, seeking protection, with the chieftain of a tribe, both in order to ensure that all of his needs are fulfilled, and so that he is saved from the mischief of bandits. Otherwise, he would have to face his endless enemies and needs, distressed because wretchedly alone. On such a journey two men set out to the desert, one of them a humble man, the other deeply conceited. The humble man immediately affiliated himself with a chieftain, but the conceited man refused to do so. The affiliated man roamed freely. He was in perfect security, wheresoever he should choose to go. If he encountered a bandit, he would say, I am journeying in the name of the chieftain so-and-so, at which the thug would turn away, unable to touch him. Due to the grace of that name, he would find honor, whichever tent he might enter. The conceited man, on the other hand, endured unspeakable tribulations throughout his whole journey. Constantly trembling, and constantly having to plead for himself, he ended up wretched and degraded. O oh, conceited lower self, you are that traveler, and this world is that desert. There is no limit to your powerlessness and poverty, and no end to your enemies and your needs. This being so, affiliate yourself with Allah who is the endless owner and the beginningless ruler of this desert, so that you can be free from having to beg from created beings, and free from fear of every event. Yes, this phrase is such a blessed treasure that through it, your limitless powerlessness and poverty bind you to endless power and mercy, and thus do powerlessness and poverty become truly valid intercessors for you at the door of the Almighty, the Compassionate. Yes, the one who acts, saying this phrase, is like someone who enters military service, and thereby acts in the name of the state. He fears no one, for he speaks in the name of the state and of the law. He accomplishes everything, and he can withstand anything. At the beginning, we said that all existing beings say Bismillah, in the name of Allah, through the language of the states of those things. Is that so? Yes. If you were to see a single individual come along and forcibly drive out every inhabitant of a city to a particular place, and then compel them to work there, you would be in no doubt whatsoever that such a man could not possibly be acting in his own name, or through his own power alone. Rather, one would be forced to conclude that such a person must be a soldier, acting in the name of the state, and relying on the power of the ruler. It is in a similar way that all existent beings act, in the name of Allah. The very minutest, particle-like seeds and stones bear gigantic trees above their heads, and hold up mountainous burdens. Thus do all trees say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, and fill their hands with fruits from the treasury of mercy. They present these fruits to us, just as a street vendor displays his goods. Every garden says, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, and becomes one of the cauldrons of the kitchen of divine power in which diverse types of delectable foods are together cooked in abundance. Every single blessed animal, like the cow, the camel, the sheep, and the goat, say Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Thereby do they become springs of milk from the outpouring of divine mercy, offering to us, in the name of the provider, a most fine and pure food, like unto life-giving water. The slender, pliant and silk-like roots and rootlets of every single plant, tree and herb, say Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Thereby do they pierce hard rock and earth, whence they then emerge. They say, in the name of Allah, and, in the name of Ar-Rahman, and all things become subjugated to them. Yes, 
consider the perfect ease in which roots spread through hard rock and dry earth. Under the earth, they give fruit just as easily as branches are able to spread in the air and produce fruit. The way green leaves, fine and delicate, stay moist for months despite the blight of extreme heat. All of this constitutes a real slap in the mouth for the naturalists, and pokes a finger into their eyes, may they be blinded. Saying all the while, even hardness and heat, upon which you so much rely, act through a divine command, for these rootlets, though delicate and silk-like, break apart rocks, thereby obeying, like the staff of Moses, peace be upon him, the divine command. Fadri B. Asakal Hajar, strike the rock with your staff. Leaves, as fine as cigarette papers, recite the verse Ya Naru Kuni Baden, Wa Salama, O Fire. Be coolness and peace, to the burning heat, just as did the limbs of Ibrahim, upon whom be peace. All things implicitly say Bismillah, in the name of Allah, and attract thereby the blessings of Allah. When they present them to us, it is also in Allah's name. It is then surely incumbent upon us too to say Bismillah, in the name of Allah. We must give in the name of Allah, and we must take in the name of Allah, and we must not, therefore, take from the type of heedless people who do not give in the name of Allah. A question. To those who have no greater role than simply displaying merchandise, we pay a price. So what price does Allah ask? The true owner of all goods. The answer. Yes. In return for these precious benefactions and goods, the true benefactor asks three things of us. The first, remembrance of Allah, zikr. The second, gratitude to him, shukr. The third, contemplation, fikr. At the beginning, bismillah, in the name of Allah, is remembrance, zikr. At the end, alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, is gratitude, shukr. And in between there lies one's thinking and understanding that these blessings are each precious and artistic wonders. And the miracles of the power of the singular, the independent and eternally besought. And a gift of his mercy, this is contemplation, thicker. It would be foolishness to kiss the feet of a poor man coming to give you a valuable gift from a king, without recognizing who the gift has been sent by. Praising and showing affection for the people apparently bestowing blessings, while forgetting the ultimate, real benefactor, is, however, an example of foolishness a thousand times more extreme. O oh, lower self, if you wish to avoid being such a fool, then give in the name of Allah, and take in the name of Allah, and begin in the name of Allah, and an act in the name of Allah. Peace be with you.